All right, what's up? Today we're gonna to be cracking BitLocker encrypted drives using John the Ripper, Hashcat, and FTK Imager. So the first thing you wanna do is install Hashcat and John the Ripper. If you don't already have those, I'll link a video up here and you guys can go download that right now. But once you've done that, we're going to now download FTK Imager. So if you go to Access Data, FTK Imager, uh, you're going to have to enter in some information and they'll email you a download link and then you can download it for free. Um, I'll put the link to this in the video description so you guys can just click on that and go straight there. Once you have FTK Imager installed, let's make sure we have our BitLocker drive. So my BitLocker drive is local disk L. Uh, it's 300 gigs and it is encrypted with BitLocker as seen by the little prompt right here. If I enter in the password, it'll unlock it and I can see the text file. So let's go into the BitLocker settings and see how we did that. You can go into manage BitLocker and you can see that my C drive is BitLockered and it's different from my L drive, which is also BitLockered, both a different password. So if you have a drive and you wanna BitLocker it, turn on BitLocker, enter in your key, save your password recovery key to either your Microsoft account or a text file. Uh, you can't save the text file to a already BitLocker drive because if you lose a password, then your um, recovery file is obsolete. So make sure that is BitLockered and then we're going to image the drive and that is how we're going to extract the hash. So if we head on over to FTK Imager, this is a forensics tool used by industry professionals, but it's free because it's just the imager portion. There's also FTK, which goes into more of the forensics. So we're going to file and we're going to create a disk image. Click that. We're going to do a physical drive, click next, and then choose the drive you want. So mine is the 300 gigabyte IDE drive. Click finish. And now we're going to add the image destination. So we're going to choose raw at the DD. Uh, don't do smart EO1 or AFF. This will not work. Click next. Type in some case numbers, some notes. Click next, and then give it uh, a file name. Uh, this will have to be on a drive that is larger than your BitLocker drive. So I have new volume F. This is a one terabyte drive that I have. Hit OK. Give it the file name. So I did disk image dot image and then fragment size. You want this all in one file. So for EO1 and raw, you can just send the, set the fragment size to zero and this will make sure that it does not fragment. It will be one large file. Do not use AD encryption and you're good to go. Hit finish and then start. Uh, if you want to see progress, you can hit this little check and it'll show you how long it's going to take and stuff like that. I already have this done. Uh, it does take a while. So just keep that in mind. We're going to hit cancel here because you guys are going to hit start though. Once we have our image, we're going to go over to where it's stored. So mine is new volumes and it's going to look like this in the disk image dot image dot zero zero one dot txt. Uh, no, not, not DATXT. That's the, that's the file that tells you all the information about your image. Just the dot zero zero one. That is your image file. We have properties on this. It is 279 gigabytes, which is the usable space on my 300 gigabyte drive. Let's close this and we're going to run jumbo John on it. So I'm going to open up a new file explorer, not close my old one. We're going to head over to my jumbo john go into the run file use our little trick we learned during our last video which i'll link up here type in cmd and we get our jumbo john so what we're going to do here is run bitlocker to john.exe put dash i for the interface we want to do uh, the image file sorry and my image file is on drive f so we're going to type in drive F and it's disk image dot zero zero one. And we're going to hit enter and it's going to take a while. So it's going to look for signatures. It's 
going to find a bunch of VMK entries at the different memory points, and it's going to take a while. Um, it's going to keep finding them until it has all the ones that it needs, and it's going to spit out a little hash. Let's go look at the hash that I have right now. So like uh, bitlocker.txt. It's going to spit out a hash. It's actually going to spit out four of them. Um, I can actually bring this up for you right now. All right, so this is the uh, documentation that I use to make this video. I'll also put this down in the video description if you guys need a little bit extra help. Um, but this is what it's going to end up looking like. You're going to get these four hashes. This is an older version of the BitLocker to John, so it doesn't look exactly like this. But you're going to get four hashes. Um, one is for password, and then one is a password that's not going to give you any false positives. And then another one is the recovery key, and then another recovery key that doesn't have any false positives. The non-false positive ones uh, are slower, and they take a bit, little bit longer to crack, but you're not going to get any false positives. So if you're worried about that, run those instead of the originals. Uh, we're going to be using a user password attack instead of the recovery key, because my user password is very easy. It's very simple. It's going to be cracked with a word list uh, relatively quickly. If we were doing if we we're doing a drive and we didn't know the password at all, or if we knew that it had a really long and complex password, we might do a recovery password fast attack. Um, this is because we know the mask. So the mask is a bunch of digits, a dash, a bunch of digits, dash, and it keeps on going on for a long time. So that would take forever, but it would be a lot faster than if we knew they had like a 20 or 30 character password with alphanumeric and some special characters. So it's going to spit out that hash. And what we're going to do with that hash is we're going to copy it and we're going to paste it into a text file in our hashcat folder. Now you can also crack this with John, but I'm just much more comfortable with hashcat. And I know that hashcat's going to crack it a lot faster than John is. So we're going to open up a hashcat command prompt. And we're going to run hashcat. Uh, it's just hashcat now, isn't it? There's no um, hashcat64 anymore. Dash n. And then the key for BitLocker is 22100. Um, and then we're going to give it our BitLocker TXT file that we made, put the hash in it. And then we're also going to give it a password list and I'm going to use rock you because that's the one that I have in here. We're going to enter. It's going to start. All right, now it's running. Uh, you can see it's going to take 871 megabytes to run. I'm also using the new CUDA platform. Uh, if you want to see more about this, you can watch my other video about Hashcat 6.0. I'll link that up the top. Uh, it's got a lot of new features and cool stuff. Just gonna move this over here on the right side so we can see John and Hashcat over here. Uh, it's cracking at 1704 hashes per second, so it's not really a fast hash like WPA, but it's also not really a slow hash like earlier, my iTunes cracking that I'll also put at the top of the video so you guys can watch that. Here we go. And you can see that it cracked our BitLocker hash and the hash ended up being password. So obviously, if you have a more complex password, it's going to take longer, depending on the word lists you use. If it's not in a word list, and you have to brute force it, then I recommend using the recovery key and not the user password. Um, running the Jumbo John to the BitLocker to John does take a long time. I let it run overnight for mine. Um, it's going to take longer if you have a larger uh, drive. So if your drive is a terabyte or two terabytes, it might take an entire day to run. Um, but if you have smaller things like 100 gigs or 50 gigs or if it's a USB, uh, this could go very quickly in a matter of hours. Uh, if you guys like this video, hit like, get subscribed, hit that bell icon to see all my future videos. If you guys didn't like this video, you know what to do. But I'll see you guys all later.